Hey there, beautiful teachers. My name is Nicola Canton. I run two sites, colorfulkeys.ie and vibrantmusicteaching.com. And in this video, I want to give you some teaching tips for a piece called On the Roundabout. This is by Cuthbert Harris, and it's around a grade three standard piece. On the Roundabout is a really fun piece to play. I've really enjoyed sight reading through it myself, and I know your students will love playing it too once they get over a couple of hurdles. And the main thing to get right in this piece is the rhythm. I always like to start with rhythm first, and especially in a piece like this where we've got things like semi-quavers, it looks a bit funny. If your student hasn't seen this before, it's in 4-8, it's an unusual time signature, and there's maybe a bit more going on or it appears there is. We could literally just double the whole thing, of course, and they would be completely familiar with it. But it is written with semi-quavers and quavers, and uh, we need them to get used to these patterns and work them out. So the first thing I would do is take them away from the piano, and I wouldn't have given them the score at this stage. Now, if your student has already started this piece, that's no problem. But if they haven't, I would wait to give them the music, and I would work on these rhythms for, say, two or three weeks, depending on the student, before we actually start the piece as preparation. And you can get these rhythms that I'm using here. Um, I have a sheet prepared for you totally free. Just click on the link below this video and that'll take you over um, to download this, this sheet that I'm using here. There are three rhythm exercises on this. And for each one, I would clap the right hand, clap the re left hand, tap them with both hands and then play them with just one note in each hand and then do some scale experiments. So let me talk you through that, say, with the first part of the first one. Um, I would clap the right hand first and I would choose to do this in um, Kadai syllables first. So I would say tika, ti, 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 tika, tika, um, rather than four and one, two, three, four, four and two and four and two and one and two and you get the idea rather than counting it out. You can do either or whichever you're comfortable with. Um, so I would work on the right hand, then the left hand, left hand's much more simple, and then I would put them together. That's the important part. So four and one, two, three, four, one and two and three, four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Do that lots of times with each of these, especially the tapping part. If your student can't do that independently of you, I wouldn't start the piece because you're really setting them up for failure. If they can't tap a rhythm on a hard surface, how are they gonna be playing it when there's all these other notes going on? Maybe they can do it, by imitating you, but they can't understand it. They can't get inside it and they can't correct their own mistakes. So if you can get them to tap that and be really confident doing it by themselves, they're going to be so much more successful when they come to the piano. The next step from there for me would be to play it on single notes. Uh, this piece I believe is in G major. Anyway, whatever key it's in, just pick two notes and um, have them play those repeat it over and over, okay? So I would do four and one, two, three, four, one and two and three, four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And if you do that kind of work, it helps bridge the gap so that you're bringing the tapping onto the piano, but there's still no worry about playing wrong notes. Some students are so concerned with getting pitches wrong that they destroy rhythms. <laughs> every rhythm in their path and it really is so much better it sounds so much better with good rhythm than with good notes of course we want both in the end but rhythm should come first so making that transition and then try playing the rhythm of the right hand with the scale the rhythm of the left hand with the scale and working on it that way if you do that with all of these exercises then apply it to the piece and get your student to hunt out these rhythms within the piece they're going to feel great about it so much of it is going to be a gimme. They know exactly how the rhythm sounds already, even if they've never heard the piece, which is fantastic. And they really understand what's going on. And with all of that preparation, your student is going to be super successful this piece and they're going to love 
pet playing it. It's really fun to play. I'm sure you'll agree if you play through it yourself. So I hope these tips were helpful for you. Please go and download that sheet so that I can give you those um, rhythm preparation exercises. And I hope that you enjoy working on this with your students. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.